Good morning. We're ready to get started this morning, and uh, it's good to have you with us today. Welcome to Voyage Church. We're going to uh, move right into our worship this morning. One quick announcement, and that has to do with Team World Vision. Uh, our, co our captain for our team this year is Michelle Tonemaker, and she has uh, left the building, but she was here in the first service. But she's our captain, and if you have any questions about being part of the team, please see her. We have some new members this year. That's good, but if you're still on the fence about becoming part of Team World Vision, we would love to uh, have you talk to her about that. It doesn't really start training-wise until June, so there's still time to get involved, get on the team, and be part of that. So I want to just remind you of that. Uh, the marathon or half marathon, whether you walk it or run it, is in October this year. So that's the plan as it currently stands right now. All right, enough of that. Let's move into our worship this morning. I want to read from God's Word to kind of begin with. It's a song, and it's a psalm of David. It's Psalm 108. Here's what God teaches us in this psalm. It begins like this. My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among all the nations, for your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all the earth. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for these words that remind us of your unfailing love, words that remind us of your faithfulness, reminding us that we can be confident in you, O oh God. As we sing these praises back to you today, may you be blessed, and we may, may we be blessed for being part of this corporate worship together, worshiping you, our creator, our God. Amen. Let's all stand and sing.
like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears Like holy water, your forgiveness Like sweet, sweet honey on my lips in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We sing songs of praise, of worship, of forgiveness, of restoration. We sing to one another because it's encouraging to us to do so, to hear others say those words, to hear ourselves say those words. That's a great reason why we sing these songs. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You called my name I ran out of that grave Of the darkness Into your glory I stay
looked across the pages of time He who made every living thing Behold Him He who heard humanity's cry Left His throne to wake as a child He became like the least of us Behold Thank you guys for that this morning. Uh, as Jeremy makes his way up here to share this morning, I want to just mention a quick word of thanks to those of you who are part of uh, my group that's been evaluating sermons for the last few weeks. And um, I said it in emails, but I want to say it publicly thanks for taking the time to do that. We'll wrap up next Sunday after church with our focus group discussion that I'm looking forward to. And now, after that, I'll be able to begin to analyze all the data that I've collected and finish this crazy project of mine. So I want to thank you for doing that. I also want to thank um, the team here that's helped uh, fill spots. Um, I don't um, take this lightly. Like, not every pastor, not every church has 
people they can go to to preach when they can't, like Jeremy, like Pastor Jody, like Dan, um, who, who have shared God's word uh, when I haven't been able to be here or I just need a week off. Like after hearing me for six or seven weeks straight, it's good to hear a different voice. And you'll hear that this morning in Jeremy. So I thank God to be at a church where I have that luxury. Again, not every pastor has the luxury I have in that sense. So I thank them for that. And also, one final thing. Uh, lest you think that Jeremy can get up here and wing it. Um, you know, I asked him about three weeks ago to fill, to preach. And that's a little bit short notice. I usually give four or five weeks ahead of time kind of thing. We have things a little bit better planned out. But this worked out well, so he did. But don't be um, mistaken to think that Jeremy just gets up here and wings it. Um, I have said this before. I'll say it again. It takes me anywhere from 15 to 20 hours a week to write a sermon, to um, rehearse it, to, to, to get ready for Sunday morning. I mean, it does take that long. I had somebody recently on my softball team say, hey, how long does it take to write a sermon anyways? Like three, four hours? I'm like, three or four hours, I'm just getting started, right? So Jeremy knows what I'm talking about. So anyway, it's, it's a long process. And I was joking in the first service because I have a friend in the first service. His name is Bruce. And Bruce loves Joel Olstein. So when he's not listening to me, Joel Olstein is his favorite preacher. And I said, you know how long Joel Olstein takes to get ready to preach on TV? I mean, he's on TV. He's got to be good, right? He spends about 25 to 30 hours preparing each Sunday, for each Sunday's worship. He spends six hours on Saturday rehearsing his sermon over and over and over and over again. Because he's going to be on TV. He's got to look good, right? So Jeremy and I, we don't have to wear the makeup like he does. But anyway, um, nevertheless, I just share all that because, again, God's Word's important to us. We spend time in study of it. And we share what we believe God has led us to share. So uh, we don't take it for granted. I can't get up here and wing it. Jeremy can't either. So let's pray for Jeremy this morning as he shares God's word. We thank you, God, today for Pastor Jeremy and his willingness to share. Even though this is not necessarily something that he does on a regular basis, God, you have called him to do this today. And so, God, may you impart to us great wisdom as your spirit empowers him to share God's word today. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. How's everybody doing today? How is everybody doing? I'm usually in Sunday school during second service, so you're all just joining me for Sunday school today is basically what this is. Um, but a couple weeks ago, Jeff actually talked about knowing God in a sermon. And in there kind of gave me the inspiration for what I wanted to talk about today, what I felt led to in the spirit to talk about today. And that is remember Remembering God. Remembering God. What does that mean, you might ask? It's not like forgetting that he exists isn't what I mean when I say remember who God is. But I have two questions for you, actually. Have you, the first one, gone through something hard and tried to push through it by yourself? For, for, for one thing. And the second question I have is, have you ever, in your spiritual life, in your walk with Christ, been stagnant in your life? We've all had seasons for that. If you say yes to either of these things or both, like I did, then today I want to remind you that God is there. God's there for you. God is with you. And not only is he there for you, maybe even more importantly, remember that you can go to him or you're supposed to. You should go to God, no matter what it is in your life. Whatever the problem is, whatever's going on, go to God. When it comes to our relationship with God, sometimes we act like he's not enough. Jeff, a couple weeks ago, talked about qualifications for God or qualifications of God. Like we try to bottle him up sometimes and say, X, Y, and Z, God can do all these things for me. But can he do that too? And it's, we try to reason with it, we try to justify it, we try to figure it all out, but Really, we always sing about and read about and talk about how all-powerful, all-knowing, eternal, and unconditionally loving God is. But, like, sometimes maybe we don't take that fully to heart or fully comprehend what that means. And what that means is when we go through these hard times or when we go through good times, whatever it is, no matter what it is, going to God for whatever it is. We go through many seasons of life. Two types I want to talk about with you guys today, two seasons that Scripture really points out, are seasons of trials 
end seasons of tribulations. And the other one is the opposite of that. I guess the seasons of like an abundance of blessings in your life, good things going on. And I have a question for you, a challenge for you. Why do we fail to go to God in both of those situations, when both of those seasons are going on? Why do we fail to go to God when things are going well, as well as when we need something? Why do we fail to do that? Why don't we go to the one that gives us everything that we have? That's my first question. I can tell you why I struggle with it, because I struggle with pride. So it's trying to, it's stubbornness. It's trying to push through something myself. I don't like burdening people. Maybe you guys feel that way too. You don't want to burden the people around you with your problems or what's going on. And similar to that, maybe with our relationship with God sometimes, we don't want to burden him with what's going on, what's happening to us in our lives. But that's exactly what he's there for. He wants to know. He wants to have that with us, that connection. So we're to bring that to him. I want to dive in real quick to Scripture for you guys um, in Psalms. Um, or no, into the first, actually the first character. Before we dive in there, I just want to talk about David real quick for you guys because he wrote a lot of the Psalms and a lot of people see it in there that it's a reflection of like his heart, what he's going through. Now we can think of David, we can think of our lives, we can think of any the most influential, powerful, rich person you can think of or someone you look up to, someone you look to as a mentor, whoever it is, they probably have bad days. They probably have hard days. So I want to talk about trials first. And in that, David was a king, right? David slayed Goliath with a rock. David had power, riches, all this fame. He was respected and feared by many other nations. He was apparently good looking. I wouldn't know. I wasn't there, but I've heard that. And he had all the good things going for him. So you'd think his life would be perfect, that he'd be happy, perfectly happy. His, the stars should align. But... David struggled with depression, a deep, deep cut. See, David, like a lot of us, he committed sin. He committed a big sin, and God, the punishment for that sin, the repercussions of that, was he lost his infant child. The infant child died, and he got torn to the core, Scripture says. He got ripped apart on the inside. It hurt him. It cut him deep. Maybe you guys haven't had that happen, but you might be able to relate to something that hurt you that felt like brokenness. That's what David, he was broken to the core. And so I want to dive into Psalms because he really writes about that when he's documenting it in Psalms. So I want you guys, if you want to turn in your Bibles, I have Psalms 6, 6 through 9 for you guys. And I'll let you guys turn there for a second. Verse 6 says, I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping, and I drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. Now, we all go through hard times, maybe like David's going through. Um, the first thing to understand is what, what a trial and a tribulation is, is it's a great, tremendous pain. It's a tremendous amount of suffering. David's going through that. But while going through that, he's not pointing the finger at God, blaming God for what's going on in his life, saying it's your fault that I sinned, or it's your fault for the, whatever the broken situation is in my life. He's not doing that. Instead, he's going to God, and he's crying out, like Jeff just read that quote from C.S. Lewis. It's okay to yell sometimes at God. It's okay to be like, I don't know what's going on. It's okay to cry out to the Lord, and that's what David's doing here. But the distinction is he's crying out in prayer to the Lord. David, in this, he writes about his grief. Maybe you guys can relate to grief. Grief could be a whole bunch of different things. Losing a loved one, losing a child, uh, going through a divorce, having marriage struggles. It could be losing your job, losing a house. I mean, there's all sorts. It could just be anything. And maybe it's not grief for you guys. Maybe it's something like a depression, like what David was going through. Depression is very draining. Like, all your energy is gone. You feel worthless. Maybe you feel numb, nothingness, empty, stressed, anxiety-filled panic attacks, I mean, whatever it is. I mean, people have divorce, you have stress in your life, 
whatever it might be, these are the seasons that some of us go through sometimes. Sometimes some people might feel they're going through a constant season all the time, constant trials. My life is horrible. Sometimes you have that. Sometimes you'll feel that way. Well, I want to encourage then in that, whether it's all the time or once in a while, I want to encourage you guys, I want to push you guys to do what David does and cry out to the Lord. Pray it out to the Lord. Bring it to him because he just wants that authentic, deep connection, that deep relationship, that intimacy with each and every one of us. He wants to know you deeper. He, he, yes, he knows everything. He's all powerful, but he still wants that relationship with you. He's faithful to each and every one of us. We can be faithful to him in our prayer life and bring whatever problems may come up to him and just present them and give them to him, surrender those to him. For me, I think it is my pride and ego, arrogance, or maybe stubbornness that gets the best of me where it's like, I can get through this. I can be strong enough. I can do it, right? I can get, I can push through by myself. Truth is, though, we can't do it on our own. I think we all know that. I think we all realize that, but I think sometimes we forget. We just get caught up in the clutter and the busyness of life, and we just try to move day to day and keep going, right? And that's going to lead to a lot of burnout, but we still do it. We try to push through on our own, and I think that really just falls us deeper and deeper into anxiety or stress or, or pain or if we're upset, anger, whatever it is, depression, that's where it really seeps its roots into, you know? So go to God with those things. Surrender them. I mean, fully give them to God. The next part that I want to talk about, the opposite side of that, though, is when things are going really well, right? Thankfulness, right? So I want to talk about that with you guys real quick. Life going well could be anything that the season of abundance, of blessing, that could be anything from good health, good physical health, good mental health. Uh, you got a new job, paid off your debts, um, got a new house, got a new dog, got a new car, whatever it is, life's going well. That, I mean, life has these great seasons sometimes, and those are incredible. But I think sometimes the problem that happens is in those, we're still supposed to go to God. Like, it's, it's maybe easier to think about, oh man, when I need something, going and asking but when things are going really well, I think it's more important to just go to him still, to thank him for all the things that he gives us. I think for me, in my own prayer life, it's like a mental thing. It's like, well, I don't really need anything right now, so what's the point of going to him? I don't need to ask for anything, so what's the point of going to him? That's not what it's about. Like I said before, it's your own personal connection with God. It's a conversation. You have an opportunity to connect with him heart to heart. Where he's going to hear out what the, maybe the struggles were before. Or now, God, look what you did for me. I'm so thankful. He wants to, he's worthy of our praise. We just sang it. He's worthy of the praise. He deserves the praise. So falling into that stagnant lifestyle is really easy when things are going well. But I think the way that we can get around that is to think back to what he delivered us from before. If you guys have been delivered from your trials in the past and you feel the blessings and the abundance now, Looking back, I think that can motivate us to be more thankful. A uh, passage I really want to hit real quick is in Colossians about some thankfulness. I really like this one. It's uh, Colossians 2, uh, 7 through 10 for you guys. Uh, so let's turn there real quick. Let you guys turn there for a second. I'm actually going to start in 6, verse 6 through 10. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow or deceptive philosophy, which depends on a human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. I think there's a lot in there, but two verses quickly that I really want to hit in that, that I really want to touch on, is verse 7 and verse 9 for you guys. It says, another way of reading that, the NLT translation, I think says, Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. And that's, that's just our foundation. That's what that's talking about. That's everything we have. It says, be rooted, deeply rooted into something, and then built 
on that. Like, he's our rock. He gives us that foundation. So in that, that means that every single day, no matter what it is, whether it's waking up in the morning or if it's your breath, whatever, the first breath of the day, that's a gift from God, that alone. So everything after that, if you think of it that way, is an abundance of blessings, every single thing you add on after that. So we have so much to be thankful for then. If that's the minimum, and he gives us everything with that and everything else, we have a lot to be thankful and grateful for. And sometimes, I know I do, and maybe you guys struggle with this too, remembering to be thankful for the little things in life, the things that we take for granted, the big things as well, obviously, but remembering to be thankful for those, for all those different things. And I also liked the ninth verse in this, and in the NLT, I think, translation for that says, For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body. So you are also are complete through the, your union with Christ. So you are made complete through your union with Christ. He completes us, it says. The Greek for that means needing nothing. You are made whole with God. It says once you have that relationship with Christ, you are made whole. You're made new. You're made whole. You're made complete. So if you're made complete, then you have a lot to be thankful for. Just that alone is huge. That's everything. That's our, literally a core of our faith. And then everything else, the houses, loving family, loving friends, whatever it is that you can think of, those are blessings beyond all measure, beyond the minimum, which is that he's there for us and he wants and desires a deep connection with each and every one of us that we can be thankful for. So I want to challenge you all today to thank God for the blessings in your life. Don't just dismiss them. Don't just think about, well, things are going well. Don't get into that stagnant, that go by the motions, that routine of just getting something and then moving forward. Thank him. Stop. Pause. And thank him for the little things and also the big things of what he does for you on any given day, every single day. Right? I also, I think I want to share a story with you guys um, that I think you can relate to that really goes through the motions of going through the trials and tribulations, and then seeing the deliverance, seeing God work in that, and to where it is now. So I think this can hit both sides of the conversation that we've had today. Um, but I do want to, before I get into that, give a little bit of like a trigger warning for it could be some like deep, emotional, intense stuff. So I just want to say that first, for beforehand. Um, but for me, I'm only about 25, so I'm still pretty sh short-lived life, pretty young still. Um, but even so... In my short 25 years, I've had my waves of life go up and down. I've had seasons. We've all had different seasons of just the incredible thankfulness and the really hard. It's good to thank God when it's hard sometimes, too, to mention that. It's really good, while things are dark, that you can still find light. It's really important to think of that. And this story, I think, will point that out, too. So when I was growing up as a kid, I was abused by someone that was supposed to love me and take care of me. And I was abused for about 12 years. And physical, mental, emotional, verbal, all of it. And with that led to a lot of anger as I grew up, a young kid going into my teen years, a lot of anger turned to hatred, turned to hate towards that person, hate towards the situation. I started pointing my finger and blaming God. The exact thing that David did not do, where he cried out and asked God for help to take him to deliver him. I wasn't doing that. No, I was saying, it's your fault. I was saying, why don't you do something about it? Or why are you letting this happen? Or why is this happening? And you're just sitting there. Where are you? I was pointing the finger as, this is your fault. And I promise you, and if you've ever gone through something hard, if you've gone down that route, there wasn't a lot of growth. There wasn't a lot of positivity. There wasn't a lot of healing or upward trending from that like you would with thankfulness in your times of good. I didn't see a lot of that back then. I did see a lot of cursing God and questioning God and being confused and like I said, a lot of anger, a lot of fear. But I went throughout my teen years a little bit into like the middle teen years and I got baptized at about 15 and I think I started taking my faith more seriously then and I started realizing the connection that God wanted from me that deep, intimate relationship that we're talking about. That's what I realized. I started getting the basics of that. And I started praying. I started actually praying. Not just praying to ask for something because I wanted something. Not just praying because I was told it was a good thing to do, but because I genuinely wanted to connect with God. 
And in that, there was a lot of pain. I still had a lot of hatred in my heart, a lot of anger in my heart towards the person that was supposed to take care of me. And I also realized that I was given grace when I don't deserve it. And that person needs grace, not just from me, but they need, they, I hope they find grace from God. They need to come to God so that they can have and experience that mercy. And I wanted that. So I would go and I'd start praying for healing, deliverance of the situation, peace of mind. And I'd pray for that person, for their heart to change, that they would get a hold of God. Because I thought about what it did for me and mine, and I wanted everybody to have that. And I, then I thought, I'm like, well, I want that person to have that too. Because imagine the magnitude of the change that could be there if they got a hold of that, right? And it was in pain. I was, I was still, like David, I was weeping in that a lot. I was, a lot, I was afraid a lot. But I just remembered to pray rather than curse or get angry, to pray about it. And fast forwarding to now, 10, 7, 8 years later, it's like I can think back to that and think about how far it's come. This person now has a relationship with Christ. I was always in that time of prayer, in that fear and the anxiety of everything. I was always praying that I could maybe, through me, be a light to that person and bring something, like show them who God is. And now I can be assured in saying that maybe it was me, maybe it was partially me, maybe it wasn't me at all, but that person nonetheless has found an authentic relationship with God. And they've experienced grace for the first time, and now they know how to give grace to others. Maybe the hardest part for this person was forgiving themselves because of the years of hardships, the years of horrible, and the years of pain. And I mean, it took a lot for me to forgive that too, you know, but I realized I have to. You can't hold on to hate. You can't hold on to anger. And it was only prayer that healed that as well. And so now I look back, and I'm, man, 10 years from, that, from then, when I was crying myself to sleep, to where I'm at now, it's just the tremendous blessing God has moved me with. I just think there's so much to be thankful for. When I'm praying at night, usually that pops into my head, if I, especially if I talk to them in that given day, it'll really pop into my head, usually all day, and I'll pray right then sometimes because I'm so thankful for where that relationship is. We love each other, and we have a solid relationship now that was not there until God got in the middle of it, which didn't start until I stopped blaming him and pointing my finger at him and started praying to him and actually just, God, I can't do it anymore. Surrender. I'm giving it to you. So I want to encourage you guys today to do that because this person and me have this relationship now that I'm able to be thankful for. And then that spirals into a whole bunch of other things because there's so much smaller things than that and it helps me think of those little things that we take for granted. So I want to encourage you guys today that if you're going through storms or your trials, that it does get better. I finally had hope when I started praying and I started seeing true hope that something was better down the road. And now I'm there and I can think of the thankfulness that I have for getting through that. You guys have that same opportunity just praying to God to deliver you from any depression, any situation, any pain, any, any grief, anything that you go through. You have that same opportunity. So I encourage you guys to do that. Surrender. And also, if things are going well, don't get stagnant. Be thankful for the little things. And when big things happen too, be thankful for that. Be mindful of that. Be grateful for that. Because God is worthy of our praise. He is qualified for that. So. All right, thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for sharing that and that testimony. And um, I'm sorry you had to go through what you had to go through. And uh, your dad was in the first service, and he was quick to point out, it wasn't me, it wasn't me um, that he was talking about. So, but we do pray for that individual. We pray for you, and thank you for sharing that powerful testimony about that. Uh, let's pray, and then we'll wrap up. Father God, we thank you for this message that you've given us today. God, that we might remember you in the good times as well, in the, as, as well as in the times when things are not rosy, when things are not going well. God, remind us of who you are every single day. We have a new opportunity to acknowledge you each day we wake up. Help us to acknowledge you this week in all things, we pray. Amen. Let me uh, offer you these words as our benediction this morning. Uh, before I do that, next week is Pentecost Sunday. It's the day in the church year when we recognize the power of the Holy Spirit. So we'll do that next week. 
Uh, but for this week, our benediction comes from 1 Thessalonians, and it reads like this. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for being here. We'll see you again next week. Yeah.